Good day everyone and welcome to this edition of Caps 13's magazine show. My name is Jacob Tavir and I'll be your host today. Our topic of discussion for this episode is student spare time. What can you do in between classes and for your leisure time? This is the Jack H. Overman Student Center. It's a great spot for students to kill some time in between classes or even get some last minute studying done. Taylor Blair takes an inside look on Caps 13's first ever edition of GTV Cribs. Summer is gone, but the summer is gone. Mm, you smell that? That's the smell of hot, fresh bagels that I can bake every morning. You guys have a few minutes before your first class? It's always a great idea to stop by Einstein. Now 
Now this is pretty interesting. If you guys have time, be sure to check out the progression of Pitt State's logo that's displayed on the wall of the Student Center. This is the relaxation room. Here students can come after class and lay in these big comfy massage chairs and de-stress after a long day. Only one rule though, no cell phones allowed. Oh no, I'm almost late for class. Oh, you're just gonna stay here? Okay, I'll come back and find you after class. See you later. The Student Center even has quick boost charging stations where you can get some extra juice for your phone in between classes. Speaking of smartphones, what do we really know about this device that fits in our pockets? I decided to take a closer look. In 2007, Steve Jobs announced the arrival of the first generation iPhone. By 2011, 34% of American adults owned a smartphone. That number nearly doubled in 2015 with an estimated 64% of smartphone ownership. Even more staggering, 46% said that they couldn't live without their phone. Smartphones today impact our daily lives immensely. Individuals belonging to Generation Y or 1977 to 1994, are estimated to have their mobile device on their person 91% of the time. Rapid advancement and universal adoption have allowed these devices to work their way into societal norms with hardly any questions asked. With smartphone technology exponentially advancing and continuing to integrate itself into society, one must ask, what kind of impact do these devices have on people, on our youth, and on mass psychology? Many would argue, though, that this is only the beginning. Top smartphone companies release a new phone about once a year. Each new installment has upgraded hardware and software. Take this phone, for example. The Samsung Galaxy S7 Active is IP68 dust and water resistant and can last up to 30 minutes submerged in up to 5 feet of water. In only a few short years, smartphones have changed the face of our society. Our source of communication, entertainment, social media, data logging, and so much more are compiled down into one device that can fit in the palm of your hand. What do smartphone manufacturers have in store for the future? Only time will tell. For CAPS 13, I'm Jacob Trevier. So now that we know a little bit about smartphones, how much do we really know about the internet? A source of communication that we use every single day. Our friend Taylor Humphreys asks all the right questions. We live in the age of information. In all of our pockets exists a portal to all of the books, poems, songs, maths, sciences, hopes, and fears that humans have collected and protected for thousands of years. Many students spend their time in class browsing it, and others use it to change the world. It has affected our lives in a plethora of ways, but most substantial is the change that is happening in the younger generations as they grow up knowing only a world of information. As you send text messages to your friends or browse Facebook, do you ever wonder how that information gets there? Well, you are harnessing the power of thousands of computers that make up the network of the internet. The internet is found in all 210 nations, and in each of these nations, they face the reality that the internet has become an increasing part of the average person's life. The average adult spends up to 20 hours per week on the internet. However, teenagers beat this average by upwards of 7 hours. With an abundance of students in college classrooms equipped with computers in their pocket, it is no wonder that they may be seen as a distraction. However, a recent study concluded that when in a classroom setting, students and teachers alike tend to abstain from the use of their cell phones. But who can truly deny checking their text messages and social media during a moment of lull in the class discussions? Students are constantly seeking new ways of communicating. 
considering there are more than 45 billion web pages and 5,000 new domains being registered every hour, it is easy to see how a student might be distracted. This technology has proven to be more useful than not, with many students using the internet to turn in their assignments or to read messages from their instructors. The dynamics of the student technology relationship have changed over time. I know that when I was a preteen student, I often heard that I would not have a calculator on me at all times, or that a cell phone has no place in class. Some would argue against that because cell phones can often be used in place of a dictionary or encyclopedia to help supplement the knowledge that is being gained in class. Different teachers have different rules about the cell phone, but it is clear that a divide is currently present in the classrooms across the internet world. The instructors, having mostly grown up in a world that was pre-internet, do not necessarily understand the pervasive usefulness of internet and cell phone technology. Cell phones were once a pure communication tool that utilized only cell networks to place calls. Now since the introduction of the Apple iPhone in 2007, the application has become king. Most students spend their time using applications such as Facebook and Twitter, as well as Instagram and Snapchat. These applications have changed how information is spread by changing the format and the audience. Whereas on Facebook you will probably find your crazy uncle ranting about politics, on Instagram you will find people traveling, partying, and eating food. The main benefit of the separation of the scope of these apps is the changing audience and the types of content that are created on the applications. Many students spend their leisure time browsing these apps and forging relationships that likely would not have happened without it. In other words, our future generations may be a result of our use of technology, and that may have implications of its own. Today we use cell phones for a multitude of purposes, but the scope of that is changing. Cell phones are now used for emergencies as well as entertainment and love. So the next time you pick up a cell phone, take a moment to appreciate how complex the network is that you are using, and how long it took us to get here. Oh, and give your teachers a break. For CAPS 13, I'm Taylor Humphreys. Although our phones and computers are amazing pieces of technology, we can't spend all of our spare time in a virtual world. A good spot to blow off some steam or even partake in some physical activity is the Weed Physical Education Building. Libby Shea takes a closer look. The Garfield Weed Building has different activities students can enjoy. First, let's check out the ticket office. Students and faculty can get their tickets for events like football, basketball, volleyball, softball, and also events that are held by the Bicknell Center Family for the Arts. Students are still coming in to get their tickets for this weekend's homecoming football game. Basketball games are held in John Lance Arena on the Wetzel Court. There is a volleyball game Friday and Saturday at 6 p.m. There are other activities students can do within the weed, like getting some exercise swimming. Let's check out the weed swimming pool. Swimming is great exercise, and the Aquatic Center is the perfect place to get in some cardio in your spare time. They are open Monday through Thursday, 6.15 a.m. to 7.30 a.m., and Monday through Friday, 11 a.m. to 7.30 p.m. If you need a little push to exercise, there are classes available on Monday through Thursday. There are also swim lessons available in October and November for all ages. There are also private lessons available upon request. The Plaster Center is connected to the weed and also available for students to use, not just athletes. Let's go see what's available. The recently built Robert W. Plaster Center has all sorts of equipment to use to stay in shape. The track is open to students during the day so they can work on their speed and endurance. The weight room is open to students on Monday through Thursday, 6.30 to 9.30 p.m. and has lots of different machines and free weights for students to use. Your downtime is a great time to head over to the weed to get a ticket, watch a game, go swimming, and to get some exercise lifting and running. I understand weights and training isn't for everyone, 
But the Gorillas Activity Board has plenty of events that happen on campus to fill your spare time. Again, thank you for joining us on this edition of CAPS 13's Magazine Show.